Hey guys, welcome back. It's been two days. So I've been testing the new battery monitor 712 smart controller. It's a bit of a learning curve. It's one thing I'm going to say is I will give to the EnerDrive ePro Plus. It was a lot simpler to set up. It's basically a connect and forget. You just put in the perimeters for your battery, how many amps, and that's it. I only ever had to do that once and it's always been faultless. It's always been accurate. And that's one thing with the EnerDrive ePro Plus is how accurate it is and how simple it is to set up. I've ran into a few issues with the 712 battery monitor. I'm still learning about it and I'm starting to get there now. And the biggest issue I ran into, it was all working fine. I set the perimeters, everything was working fine. It was brilliant. And I ran it overnight with the fridge freezer to drain a bit of power in the battery. And I even had the travel buddy out as well during the middle of the day. And then I connected the solar panel. It was working fine, at least while I had the travel buddy on. And then it was overcast. And I didn't realize it because the battery was at 80%. I came back 15 minutes later, my monitor was showing 100% state of charge. I knew that's impossible. There's no way it could charge 20% in the battery within 15 minutes to half an hour. So I knew something was going on and I checked and it was still bulk charging. So I was a bit confused. So I could feel, I was kind of calculated, oh, it's probably in reality, it's probably around about 85% battery charge. So I synchronized it to 85% battery charge. Meanwhile, while I was doing all this, it was overcast. So there was, uh, there was sunlight and then shade and sunlight and shade. The way the algorithms, the way it's all set up through the Victron, as far as what I can understand, I don't know if I've got this right, but it's really critical to have it set on the charge voltage and some of the other settings two main settings that needed to be adjusted in particular the charge voltage so I since found out that depending what type of charger you're using whether it's a solar charger or whether it's a 240 volt charger or your DC DC charger so what happened is when this cloud cover came over it fooled the battery monitor into thinking that the battery was 100% charged and then it jumped up to 100% charge because remember I told you I set it to about 85% well within about 10 minutes or so after that pretty much a cloud caver came, came over it jumped up to 100% again so I did some research and I found out through Victron this is only an issue with AGM batteries so I believe with those with the lithiums you will not have this issue but with AGM or any lead acid type batteries has got this issue and I'm really interested to know if many of you guys out there particularly who's, who owns the AGM if you ever noticed this issue before that's got the Victron uh, BMV 712 smart battery monitor that does it for no reason just jump up to 100% state of charge even though it's not 100% state of charge when you're using a solar panel on an overcast day cloudy day or it's a sunny day and a cloud comes in and then it just drops down basically drops down to zero like nothing no charge what happens is when that happens it thinks the battery monitor thinks it's 100% charge so you've got to go into the settings and change it and the main settings you need to change is that charge voltage. So if you go into settings on your app and then click on battery, you'll see a heading there called charge voltage. Now when you set to AGM or lead acid battery, the advice by Victron is to set it at 0.2 volt under your float charge. So the float charge on, on mine, on both my BCDC Red Arc charger and my AC chargers is 13.6. So you set that to 13.4. But if you leave that and don't change it when you connect the solar panel and then you get that cloud cover over, for some reason it gets confused and then thinks it's fully charged. So you need to change those settings. 
So what you do is you change your charge voltage, 0.2 volt below whatever your absorbent charge rate is set at. So in my case, I think the absorbent, okay, I did all this yesterday, so I can't remember, or whatever it is. So let's say, for example, it was 14.4, which I think it might be 14.4. So I then set that to 14.2. So in theory now, if I set it to 14.2, and there's another setting, so there's another setting you've got to change. If you're using the AGM, you change it between 3 and 4, and I use 4. So right now, I'm actually going through a test to see if this theory is correct, and I believe it is because I've, I've checked online as well. And even, in fact, Victron's even got a recent video explaining this, this effect, how it confuses the battery. So it's not as easy to set up as the Energive, but once you've got it set up, it is very accurate. So you can't just plug it in, set it at whatever your amps, your battery is, and walk away and leave it. If you're only using the same charger all the time, it works fine, yeah, you can do that. But we use many various different types of chargers. I've got the BC-DC charger, I've got the AC charger, and I've got the solar panel that I charge with. So there's three different chargers. Now with the Enerdrive EPRO Plus, I never ever had that issue. It just worked all the time with all three. Didn't matter what sort of voltage is coming in, it just seems to work. So they seem to have a better system working that way and it seems to be a lot more accurate out of the box. And I must admit, that's one thing that Enerdrive do advertise a lot. If you go on their website with their Enerdrive ePro Plus, they do talk about the simplicity of setting it up, how easy it is to set up, just plug and play. Actually, to tell you the truth, that's one of the biggest features because when I, when I bought that some four or five years ago, I didn't know much about 12 volt battery systems. So I wanted something very easy to set up. And that was one of the biggest factors for me in, in deciding to go for the Enerdrive EPRO Plus was the fact that they claimed how easy it is to set up. And it was, because to be honest, I think I would have struggled setting up the 712 if I had bought it back then. Because I think they were available back then. They've been around for a while. So to be honest, I would have had trouble with that. So I probably made the right choice. And it's been working fine. It's great. The only thing, biggest thing I didn't like about it is it didn't have Bluetooth. But for now, I mean, obviously it was going to cost me $320-odd to get that thing operational and with Bluetooth on. And then it's not compatible with my Victron system. And now I've got that Global Link 520. So I want to know if you guys have come across this issue. So right now, I've only just turned the AC charger on and I've got the charge state set at 13.4, which was 0.2 below. So I'm going to keep a close eye on it to see if at any change it just jumps all of suddenly up to 100%. And, and if it doesn't, then that's good. Then what I'll do is I'll let the battery drain down overnight again. And in the morning, I'll change the settings to 14.4 and then see and then put the solar panel out and then see if that rectifies that issue. Now, if it doesn't, it's not gonna be a major issue. It looks like it's gonna be sooner than later I'm gonna end up with the lithium, I think, even though that AGM seems to be performing fine. I mean, I could use that home in the shed something or wherever, somewhere else, so it'll come in handy there. Now, in regards to lithium, I think I narrowed it down to two. I'm looking at the DCS which is available from a mob that's up in the Tambourine Mountains of Gold Coast. And the other one I'm looking at is the iTech. So I've narrowed it down to those two. Now the iTech's a lot cheaper, particularly at the moment with the 20% off sale on, so it's very tempting. But the problem is if I have any issues with it, then it's got to go all the way back to Perth. For me, customer service is very important. Access to repair agents is very important. DCS distributor, is located in Gold Coast. And as you know, I go Gold Coast a fair bit because I've got family that lives there. So if I ever had any issue, i just jump in the car and go for a quick drive up to the Tambourine Mountains, talk to the guys, say, here, guys, what's going on? Can you sort this out? So simple. I don't know what's involved with the iTech world. Kind of leaning towards the DCS at this stage. But I tell you what, iTech world's got a 200 amp lithium on sale that's really it's not much more than the 100 amp dcs so <laughs> it's very tempting who knows i mean by the time i'm ready to purchase that sale might have already might may have ended 
and then that would make my decision a lot easier just to go for the DCS. So we'll see what happens. So for now I'm going to run these tests and I'm curious to know if anyone else is having these issues. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this up as a separate video. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to do continuation, finish off the video on the global link because some of you guys have probably, I haven't mentioned too much about it. So I've got a video coming up, it's a bit of an unboxing video, setting it up for the first time. Uh, now that I've used it for two days, I'm going to add extra to that footage of what I've learnt over the two days. So guys, so keep tuned, keep, keep tuned for that. That won't be too far that'll probably be uploaded later today or tomorrow i'll try to get this uploaded today i'll go and edit this straight away and upload it and get on to the video for the global link because i'm pretty sure many of you guys are probably really keen to find out exactly what it is and what it does so till then cheers <laughs>